Hi, welcome back to my workshop. This is another video in the 8088, or as I've been told, 8088 series. And this time we're looking at network cards. I saw the video by Trollot Reese where he'd got his fully loaded IBM and he was using an 8 bit ISA card. They're quite expensive and I wanted to find something that was a bit cheaper. So I did some looking around and found two 16 bit cards that, according to things that I saw on Vogons, should work in 8 bit systems. So we have a Realtek card and a 3Com. I had a few issues along the way, so I thought I would make a video. This is a 3Com Etherlink 3. It's a 16 bit card. It has all three types of connections on there, but we mainly want the RJ45 or the twisted pair. I found some information on Vogons that said this should work. I found the drivers and downloaded them, but I had some problems, so I had to use some alternate drivers. As we can see, the card is in quite good condition, nice and clean. It was listed as being pulled from a working system. The first card that I brought was this Realtek card. And again, uh, I found some information that was saying um, this particular chipset is okay to work in 8-bit systems. The configuration software should detect and set it to 8-bit mode. This one has got jumpers so that you can manually set things up or you can use the configuration programs. Now I was able to get the configuration to work and I could manually set the addresses or I could automatically set them. Normally these cards want to use IRQ3 and address 300, but because I've got the XT IDE which is fixed at 300, I had to use alternate addresses. I tried IRQ3, 4, 5, um, didn't seem to matter and I tried all manner of addresses. In the end, I set it up to IRQ3, address 320, and nothing I would do would actually find packets. So we will look at that in a little bit. This card was quite dirty, um, but it does work. The configuration diagnostics passes. It knows the card's there and it sees that the link is there. It just won't send any packets. So it could be a problem with the actual packet driver. So this is the current setup that I've got. This is the, the new Micro ATX backplane. We'll talk about that in another video. We still have the floppy drive, the ID, XT IDE, the 8088 board, graphics board, and the Sound Blaster clone. So we want to be putting the network card into here and running the configuration. So first of all, let's have a look what happens with the Realtek card, which was the first one that I tried. So I'm just gonna pop it into an empty slot. And we'll plug our lead in. So part of the drivers that came with the Realtek card is this tool called R set 8019 and that's the chipset that's on this car, it's the Realtek 8019. And with this we can change the card and set things up. So if we view the current configuration, this one is currently set up with the jumpers on the card. It's also detecting the media type, the base address is 240, the interrupt is 3. So we need to remember 240 and 3 when it comes to using it. Um, and then we can run diagnostics, and we can run diagnostics on the board. And it passes the tests, everything should be working as far as the diagnostics goes. So the way that we're going to use this is with a packet driver with the MTCP packet system. The first thing we need to do is install the packet driver, which is NE2000. We need to use protocol 060, interrupt number 3, and then address 240. 
So that's the line that we use to install and get this working. So it says that it's installed the packet driver, interrupt three, correct port, and it's giving me an address. Now we need to use the MTCP system, um, but it won't work until we run and, and set a config. If we just try, it says we need to set MTCPCFG. So set MTCPCFG equals C Caroline slash network slash lead.cfg. Lead.cfg has the IP addresses and various things. So now if we try to do a ping, so the, this ping command has got everything built in to do the communications um, that we need to do. And we can see it says timeout waiting for ARP response. And I couldn't get it to do anything else. There is a uh, there is a tool PK T tool uh, so this is the PK this is the packet tool. And it's showing that we sent 11 packets out, 660 bytes out, but we've received nothing in. There's no errors, it's just things have gone out, but nothing's come back in again. I tried setting up my NetGuest switch so that I could look at it. I tried setting up a second PC so that it was not a problem with my router. I just couldn't get it to work. And I, I spent a, a good long time trying to get it working and then eventually I just gave up. So that was when I looked around again and I found on Vogons that there were people were having more luck with the 3Com card and that they had it working. So I ordered the 3Com card on eBay. So let's get this switched off and pop the 3Com card in and try again. So the 3Com comes with uh, another configuration file, 3CX5X9CFG. So this is going to do the same thing where it's going to look for the card. But this is what happens. No matter what I did, it would say that there are no Etherlink cards installed in this system. I removed everything. I thought it could be conflicting with the XT to IDE. So I booted off floppy disk, no sound cards, could not get it to work. So obviously after having the failure on the first one and now the failure on the second one, I was a bit miffed. What I did was I got out my Pentium system and I plugged the card in and ran the same setup. And when I ran the Pentium system, it did find the card and I was able to manually set up and configure the card address, which is IRQ3 and address 320. So that was progress, that was quite good. But I was like, okay, does that mean it's not going to work in this system? So after a bit more searching, I found a different driver. And this is a customized driver that was set up for working on 8-bit systems. And it was this file, 3CCFG. So this time, this configuration program worked and you could set it up via command line, but because I'd already set it up in the Pentium system, we didn't need to do anything else. So it's reading everything and say, okay, but the most important part is address 320 and interrupt three. That's what we need to get the next part working. So if we exit, go back to our back to our network folder. Now if we run a batch file that I've got called LAN, it, uh, it sets the path file with the configuration that we need. And then you just run the um, packet driver, 
followed by the protocol and it reads the EEPROM and it knows that we're on interrupt 3, port 320. So now this card is actually working with these modified drivers. We can do a ping 192.168.1.1 because I've manually put an address in, it knows how to find my router. So this time we're actually getting a ping back. It's able to talk to my router. Uh, so that's what that's it. It's working. So if you're looking to do an 8-bit system and you want to get networking, I recommend this uh, 3Com Etherlink 3 and use the modified drivers and I'll obviously put a link in the description. So what can we do with this now that we've got it? Well there are loads of tools in here. Um, So we can run DHCP, which will grab an address from the router. We can do a DNS, te DNS test. We can connect to FTP or run an FTP server. And that was the way that we will get files to and from my workstation onto this. So we could run a server as a command line and then copy files over. Um, HTGET will actually grab um, a header from a website. So htget dash headers http colon slash slash www.google.com uh, So there it's gone and grabbed the header for google.com And the other one that's really interesting is Telnet. BBS.8 bit boys.com. Uh, so Telnet, the address and the port number 6502. And here we go, we've connected to a BBS. So that opens up a whole world of online chat and online gaming. Uh, using this built-in telnet. So there we go, we have our networking card working, 16-bit ISA card working in the 8-bit system and just using those custom drivers. All the details will be in the description if you want to download it and the type of card that I use. So thank you for watching this video. The next one will be looking at getting this new board into a case and just a few details on how I recycled parts to make this new micro ATX board. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.